here there's this new blue chip. It's going to be moon. <laughs> you should bid so not to get wrecked. You're new to this, aren't you? Yeah. Just copy what I do. First. Trade like eToro's top traders. Turn their experience to your advantage by automatically replicating their trading actions. eToro, try it now. Isn't this your flaw? Not anymore. I'm copying you. All right. Maybe like Chinese. Hi, this is Sam Monak, and this is a Blockstack project review brought to you by Token Metrics. Disclaimer, this is not investment advice or financial advice. Please do your own research before investing in ICOs or STOs, as they're very risky. So we'll start off with an overview. The fundamental score was an 80%. In our opinion, this makes Blockstack an all-star ICO. The technology score was a 90%. 4.5%, also a very, very good technology score. Paresh, uh, the lead of our tech team, was excited about this project and also invested a little bit. So what we are excited about from a fundamental perspective is the 170 dApps already built on top of this program because of the developer incentive program. And it's the first SEC qualified token sale in history. What we're concerned about is early investors receive preferential treatment, and not many tokens are allocated to the community. So this is a sheet that I created so we can walk through all the fundamental data points. Anything in red is bad and did not score points for us, and anything in green is good and did score points. So were tokens sold in an 80% discount in a prior round? They were. That's not great. Are more than 50% of the tokens owned to the community? Nope, uh, also not great. Our team advisors and seed round investor tokens locked more than six months past when my tokens are liquid. Yes, they are. The company website is very aesthetically pleasing. There are team bios, long, um, long-term vision, terms of use, and clearly outlined data. They're written about a lot in mainstream media purely because of the fact that they're an SEC qualified token. There's a strong face that leads the community, or the company, Muneeb. They do have a lot of competition. They have a first mover advantage in the fact that they're the first project to get SEC qualified. They've not had any scandals. The token economic model is deflationary. There is not a proposed token burn. The website gets a lot of traffic, over 20,000 visits a month. Project's not listed on any exchanges yet. Um, 20 or more team members are working on the project. It started three years ago. There are no errors in the white paper. It reads very well. There are public videos of the team members. Muneeb and other team members are talking on YouTube. They already have users, 170 dApps built on top of the platform. They got the regulatory clearance, first SEC qualified token sale. They have lots of uh, reputable early investors. It uses proof of work. It is a blockchain project. It can exist by itself and be secured by math without the team pushing it forward. And there's a percentage of total circulating supply of less than 50%, which is not great. So here is the developer incentive program. They reward early developers for adding value, and they do this by giving cash prizes out to whatever app wins the contest. So every month they have a contest where they score the different applications, and they score the apps. Uh, there are four different independent reviewers that score these apps. They look for digital rights, user experience, awareness, and product launch when looking to see what app wins. So far, they've already paid out 800,000 in the months, the eight months that it's been live, and they're doing 100,000 now per app that wins per month. In November 2019, it will go up to 500,000. February 2020, it will be 700,000 per app that wins. And then in May 2020, you get a million dollars every month forward, $1 million per best app. You can look at app.co to see all the applications ranked right now. So here's the SEC 
qualified token offering that we're excited about. It's the first SEC qualified token offering in history for cryptocurrency, Reg A plus qualified. So right here, a little fun, interesting tidbit. Um, season five of Silicon Valley is based on Blockstack. Silicon Valley's fi fictional startup, Pied Piper, begins building a new decentralized internet in the show. Maneeb and Ryan, the co-founders, are actually advisors to the project, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. Moving on, this is what an, a video that they made to explain their project. I'll summarize the video for you. So the internet, they talk about how the internet comes out in 18 or 1983. It was totally designed to be decentralized. Then came out the World Wide Web, which is very exciting. And anyone could publish anything and communicate freely with anybody on the World Wide Web. This all kind of started to change when Google, Amazon, Facebook, Netflix, and all of these juggernauts came out and they started accumulating huge amounts of user data and lots of power. So this data is stored by these centralized internet juggernauts and it's been hacked leading to hundreds of millions or even billions of personal records being breached. So this is security is probably the main flaw in the internet today. So when your data gets out, it's on the internet forever. You can't get it back and you can't stop it. So Blockstack sees how internet has really gotten intertwined into everybody's lives and they've set out to come out with a new design for the internet that will protect the people and make sure that security is its top priority. So they built a completely new internet around decentralization. You download Blockstack and get everything you need to connect to the Blockstack internet right then and there. You make one account and you can use it on any application online, unlike having to make many accounts like Facebook, Google account, Yahoo account, ESPN account, all these different accounts. Everything on the Blockstack internet is handled by the user's local resources. So this is what I'm talking about. The $5 billion settlement that Facebook just had to pay out for loss of control over massive troves of data. So here's the roadmap. In Q2, they released the testnet. In Q4, 2018, they released the version one of the stack blockchain. And then Q2 is when they got the SEC, where they filed for, and then they actually got the SEC qualification for being a Reg A plus offering. And they also announced the plan to pay out the million dollars a month. This is what the token is used for. It's fuel to register digital assets. It also like Ethereum, it could be fuel to register and execute smart contracts. Uh, it could be used for transaction fees, anchored app chains. We'll talk now about the team. So they have five all-star team members in our opinion. I'll talk about three of them. So Rob, who is a audit for Ernst & Young and also Deloitte, which are huge companies and very credible and now works as finance for Blockstack. Then they have D. Walker Gupta, worked at Dropbox as engineering lead for intelligence, now works as head of engineering for Blockstack. Then Elizabeth Ties used to work for Morgan Stanley, and now she works for operations and product for Blockstack. Here, now we'll talk about the token metrics. The hard cap is 85 million, which is very, very high. And they, they do need to raise a lot of money, but I'm, I'm not sure if 85 million is needed, but I guess it's probably because of the developer incentive program. The ICO price is 12 cents for voucher holders and then 30 cents for the general public. There's 1.3 billion tokens, 866 million ICO tokens and 57% of the tokens are gonna to be sold. No exchanges currently list the Stacks token. So let's look at the price-wise breakup of the tokens sold. So here you got, this is the scary part. You have 0.00012 tokens sold to early investors and team. These are locked for three years. So we'll talk about the race and then move towards the SEC filing and tokens. So they raised 5 million in the Series A convertible preferred, 
from venture capitalists, 47 million in the Reg D offering. This was the 12 cent offering. All of these tokens are subject to a three year time lock as of November 2018. And they plan on raising another 28 million in the Reg A, which is going on right now. And then 10 million in the Reg S, which they're selling overseas to large institutions in Asia. So there's a lot of confusion regarding the price that the tokens have been sold to investors. So next I'll show a document that makes the SEC filing a bit easier to understand. And this is the document. So the team and early investors got tokens at 0 0.00012. This is what we're kind of afraid about. This is locked until 2021, which is good, but it's 20% of the tokens. And when it comes out, these people are probably going to dump as they got the tokens so cheap. And now the tokens are priced way higher. Um, VC investors paid 12 cents. Employees paid one cent. Now we're going to have to pay if we we're to invest 30 cents. The general public will be paying. Um, voucher holders will be paying 12 cents. Now in that uh, offering, Reg S, 25 cents. So the team and early investors have a lot of the tokens. So this, is, this is kind of the thing that we are concerned about. So I got all this information from the SEC filing from page 119. Little history. So it was founded in 2013 in Princeton. Venture capitalists like Union Square Investors, Y Combinator, and Naval Ravikant all funded. Also many other VCs. They spent four years before launching a white paper. Make sure they were completely comfortable. Uh, here's the angel list on all of the different investors. So Naval was seed round. Naval was also seed round in Uber and uh, early VC in Twitter. And he invented AngelList. Union Square Ventures has also uh, been very success successful with their investments. And Y Combinator incubated Blockstack. So Y Combinator also incubated companies like Airbnb, Stripe, Dropbox, Coinbase. They have great success. Moving on to the concerns. So in an article we found, they stated Blockstack in its offering said that they had 115,000 user accounts, but only 9,000 of them were verified with a working social proof. So of the 172 dApps, less than 10 of them have over 1,000 downloads, which is not many downloads. All their efforts has been fully focused on getting developers to build on a platform, and no one's been working on getting active users who will drive the token usage and push the price up. Some of the previous seeds were conditional based on meeting milestones like a million verified users by 2020. The CEO is a student without real world experience. There's the very low token price given to early equity investors, which is a concern. And the company will have the ability to dilute future investors by raising funds through future sales. A little bit about Blockstack. They have 3,700 members on the Telegram group. So this is the community, which is not many for a big project raising 85 million. You'd hope to see that they have way more, but they do have a lot of followers on Twitter, 29,000. So overall, our thoughts on Blockstack is it seems like there's a couple concerns that we have regarding the, the very low token price given to early equity investors and the very little amount of people that the active users that they actually have on the platform that will help with the token value. But they do have a ton of dApps built on top of it. it. It is a strong team. They have been working for a long time on this project. And it seems like their idea is very, very big and a great idea. So we'll hope to learn more about the project and we'll see if maybe uh, it will be good down the line. So thank you for watching this week's token metrics review and we'll see you next week to the moon and beyond some say that technology is getting too complex that personal data can't be protected some say that the only safe place is home that cryptocurrencies aren't safe we at Ledger believe that your data should be safe everywhere you go. That security can coexist with simplicity. We believe that your assets should be in good hands. Yours.
Ledger Nano X. Keep your crypto secure everywhere.